All right, everyone, so uh, happy February 1st, new month, and today is uh, day one of the new month and day one of uh, Trader Rehab, perhaps, for some of you. Uh, it's day two of Trader Rehab for me. So my goal right now uh, is to trade a quality setups and nothing else. And so I haven't taken any trades yet today. Uh, my general philosophy on this has been that when I focus on the highest quality setups and I trade them aggressively, that I do better. Now, in a colder in a colder market, it's especially important. In a hot market, it's more forgiving. In a hot market with a lot of stocks moving. You can reduce your quality threshold to B quality, even C quality setups, and you can still do okay. I mean, that's what I found in my experience. But uh, right now, you know, the month of January didn't treat me so well. I finished green, but it was, in fact, the slowest month that I'd had in um, uh, over a year. So, you know, that that's definitely saying something. Uh, the good news uh, when it gets slow uh, is that... Um, you can only go up from there, right? So it can only get better. And, you know, we just got to kind of be patient, get through this period. We did have some great momentum the last three days, Thursday, Friday, and Monday. We had some good opportunities. We had KSCP, uh, which, you know, I uh, could have made more on, but I traded it as best as I could and got green on it. We had IINN, some opportunities on that one yesterday. We had uh, FGI. We had IN, uh, uh, what was it? Um, I can't remember now. But in any case, we had a few different stocks over the last few days, which is good. So, um, I yeah, it was IINN, and then we had that energy, INDO. INDO was on um, was last week. So we had some, uh, some action on this one. So right now, today, as I sit down, our leading gapper, as I check every morning, is IO. IO is a 70 cent stock with a 21 million share float. It's just a little too cheap for me to be that interested in it right now. I don't usually trade penny stocks. So next one down is CREX. CREX is also fairly cheap at $1.59. Um, uh, you know, there was some news out there. You could see it popped from $1.40 up to a high of $1.70, which is nice. But it's already pulling back just a little bit. I'm going to leave that alone for right now. Next one down is ASTR, up only 14%. So this isn't even a very big gap, only 14%. Uh, and the float's 118 million shares. EMAN, 61 million share float, no volume. MRKR, no volume, 58 million share float. WBX, 160 million share float. DGHI, 25 million share float. TRVI, 8 million share float, 70 cents. AMC, 500 million share float. And now we've looked at the top 10, and there's nothing that looks good. So that's the top 10. Those are our uh, top 10 gappers this morning. There isn't one that uh, at this moment right now I'm excited about or interested in. So small caps today are slow. Uh, on the large cap side, you know, well, AMC is a bit of a large cap. UPS is a large cap. There's some traders in the large cap room that will be looking at these, so um, you know I leave those um, leave them to those guys to focus on. But you've got UPS uh, and you've got AMC as uh, potential large caps to watch today. And you know, given that it's the first day of the month, I, I have that same feeling. Well, you know, and I mentioned this last month uh, and just last week how. The beginning of a new year for me is a time where I do feel anxious because I feel uh, I'm I want so badly to be so so what it is is I'm experiencing discomfort. What's the discomfort? It's anxiety that I don't have a cushion yet on the year. What's the fastest way to alleviate that anxiety? It's to get a cushion. So that desperation to no longer feel uncomfortable is what drives me to take higher risk trades that if they work could potentially get me that really big cushion on the year, but 
When they don't work, I start going into the red. And then I start getting even more upset because then not only have I, do I not have a cushion, now I'm, I'm red on the week or the month or the year, whatever it is. So I, I am green on the year right now. I was green in January, which is good. But uh, I have to learn to be, uh, to find some level of comfort, comfortability in the discomfort of the fact that right now I don't have a big cushion on the year. But I know that I will. I know that I will have a good year. I just have to let those trades come to me and not force them. So that's easier said than done. Um, it's just you know uh, where I'm at right now. Um, let's see. And I mean, you're not wrong that it would be valuable to just not i mean you know the the thought there was i should just look at the rolling year not a not a calendar year you know just look at the last rolling 12 months uh, or you know just not even look at the last month just always look at sort of the last 90 days of trading and you know if i had done if i had been doing that um my last 90 days right here are pretty darn good Sure, I'm on a little pullback, but you know, that's not the first time I've had a little pullback. Unfortunately, the challenge um, is the fact that, you know, while it's, tr while that's, while that's a good approach, um, you know, on the website, I have my broker statements. These are, these are monthly, right? So at the end of each month, I'm invariably seeing how I did. I can't not see that. And it's hard for me to ignore when I have a month where I don't feel like I did as well as I could have. Each year is recorded, you know, through your 1099s and everything else. So it's hard to break out of that framework of thinking about month ends and year ends and quarter ends. And, and in the financial world, we it's it's a challenge. And it, it creates a short-sighted um perspective and that's not always healthy yeah i i would agree 100 percent. so yeah so that's kind of something to be mindful of and um so right now given the fact that my last 90 days have been um quite solid really i should just um you know it doesn't really matter where i'm at on uh, so it happens that January 1st was like right here. Uh, that doesn't really make a difference. This is my last 90 days, you know, and I'm just going to want need to keep keep on this pace. And 90 days from now, I'll be sitting up, you know, $1.5 million, I hope, right? I just have to stay on pace. So that's a, it's a, it's a good thought there. So anyways, um, the best way for me to stay on pace so far today has been to not take any trades because nothing yet has gotten me excited. Nothing yet I've looked at and been like, okay, that's something I can work with. Now I did see KSCP come out with news at 8.30, lands another casino. I saw it pop up and I was like, I don't trust it. I don't wanna go back to the well too many times. You know, we already had two, two good days of opportunities on it, uh, which I didn't fully capitalize on either of them. I just didn't feel like this setup was quite strong enough. So I didn't take the, any trades on that. It popped up to 21 and is now back down at 1665. So, um, you know, this one's just not there for me right now. So no trades yet today. I'm thinking that since we don't have a leading gapper, I will be very hesitant to take any trades at all. But if we do see something that is very obvious that really starts to open up, then I'm willing to, you know, get off the bench and, and take some trades. But I, do, I just don't really know if that's gonna happen. I think, what, and I sort of predicted this last week, that I think we're gonna see hot, cold, hot, cold days. So today right now feels super cold, but yesterday was hot. And maybe tomorrow or the day after will be hot. So when it's cold, so you have to be willing to just pivot like that and say, okay, I, yeah, it's kind of weird. Yesterday was really pretty good and today is terrible, but that's just because 
there's not going to be quite enough FOMO MOMO. I think traders are still going to be cautious because it's been choppy the last few weeks. And, you know, when we see something that's obvious, it's going to take a little bit more for it to start to open up. And then the move is probably going to be a little bit more extended as people finally capitulate and give in, both on covering short and going long. So it's going to be a little delayed reaction on stuff, but uh, we'll, you know, we'll do the best we can. ISUN, some news. So we can check that one. Um, float 7 million shares, so that's fine. Uh, the volume is quite light at uh, only 10,000 shares so far. So popped from 510 up to a high there of 550. So, you know, there's something there. I don't actually see a preliminary revenue higher than expected. That's the, the headline that just hit. So, you know, trade these with caution. Um, this, is this a solar company? I'm just guessing because uh, it's iSun. It might be, it might not be. But you've got really big spreads. You don't have um, enough volume. You wouldn't be able to take big share size. And this last candle here that popped up was red. So uh, I'm not going to be the first one to jump on it. It, is, it already has started spiking up a bit. So I guess I wouldn't be the first one. But, um, you know, let it prove itself. And this one has a history of popping and fading. So, you know, it's 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 close you know it has some of what we would look for the float the news the price those are good uh the spreads are bad the volume is not adequate the daily charts not great so you know you're kind of like uh, in, a, in and this is one where in a hotter market maybe i would jump on it maybe i would but in a colder market you know, can you really trust it, right? Now, with a nearly dollar a share spread, I wouldn't jump on it even in a cold, even in a hot market. But you know, when the spread was five eighteen by five forty nine, eh, maybe. But that, today's just not. I don't think the day on this one. So that's fine. Um, thanks for calling it out, though. Good to see. Uh, at least it's, there's some news on it. Let's see. So. Yeah, and you know, so we've got two minutes to the bell. So for those tuning in on YouTube, um, so right now as we're bringing back this um, season of the morning show, I'm doing it as a watch list each day. So it's my watch list of what I'm watching, what what looks good on days where we have something that's awesome that looks good. Maybe I'll stream a little longer. I'm happy to do that, but right now, you know, there's nothing much happening so i'm going to just do the the short watch list give you guys my breakdown of what i think you know i'm looking at today but you know like i said i, I don't really have uh too much so today feels like a bit of a colder day uh, and i think it's you know the, the biggest challenge is having the discipline and the patience to just sit tight so you know how that that that's it's just it seems so simple um but but it's it's kind of a it's it's being able to sit tight but like you know at attention i'm thinking of you know like these soldiers that are lined up you know on the ukrainian russian border and you know there's like nothing happening but they have to be at attention you know they can't i mean right they shouldn't be sleeping i i don't know i mean i'm not there but i'm just thinking out loud so like with trading you know could i just like go sit like you know in the hot tub well, then if something starts moving, I'm going to miss it. You know, I need to be here. Could I sit and watch TV? Yeah, I could probably do that, you know, but I, I can't, I can't just, I can't just totally relax. So it requires you to come here. And then when you're sitting here, you know, kind of with your hand on the trigger, you know, all of a sudden you see something move and, you know, boom, uh, whoa, wait a second. Okay. I'm in a trade. And you got to be careful not to be too quick to jump because then you could get yourself into trouble. So, uh, you know, I'm just kind of talking out loud, but uh, it's this challenge of sitting here on alert, but not, you know, not taking action. And it's, it's hard. It's super hard for me. 
I came in here today because I wanted to trade. I came in here today because I was looking for some good opportunities. And so when nothing's moving, I'm disappointed. I feel like I'm I'm not, you know, getting my daily trades and it's it's you know, it's disappointing. But if you can't handle that disappointment uh and you just constantly give into it and over trade, you're going to dig yourself big holes and you're going to be very disappointed in the in the outcome. So, as always, remember um trading is risky. Most beginner traders do lose money and my results are not typical. I'm gonna uh, keep streaming for our Warrior Pro students. We've been streaming since a little after eight. We'll keep streaming till um, I kind of throw in the towel officially, but we'll be here for a while and just keeping my eye on the market. Those on YouTube, uh, make sure you do hit the thumbs up and subscribe. That way, when I go live 9.15 tomorrow, you'll be able to see what I'm looking at, what my watch list is. And yeah, let's hope that maybe we, at some point this week, do get some more surprise momentum. You know, a number of the moves, uh, like this big move on the KSCP, this was afternoon, INDO, I want to say that this one uh, was sort of a surprise. Yeah, so this one was after the open, so I wasn't streaming for this trade. It was just a surprise. You know, all of a sudden it started to rip up. I think there was news at like 9.50. So, you know, say a little prayer that maybe there'll be some news. Uh, there's always There's always hope, but... Until we see something worth jumping on, we've just got to sit on the sidelines. So thanks again for tuning in for the morning show. We'll be back uh, first thing tomorrow morning. All right, students, we'll keep, uh, keep looking for opportunities.